decision making process we will study different type of operators equality and relational operator we will study which operator equality and relational operator okay so in equality or relation operator we will be comparing two different quantities we will be comparing two different quantities how it works i will show it can you see the screen we have relational operator which operator and then of two so it means we are comparing which operand operand 1 and operand 2 and in between there is a relation operator we will study different type of operator relation operator there are two possibilities there are two possibilities if the condition is true or else the condition is false so in the first case the condition is true and in the second case condition is false okay so now what is this if in c what is this if it is a conditional operator this is a conditional operator what we are comparing we are comparing two quantities what is op 1 and op 2 huh operand 1 and what is op 2 operand two so we are comparing two operands acha now operand 1 and operand 2 can be any data type it can be a variable if you say if it's a variable so it can be a double it can be of type int it can be of type float so there can be different data type operand 2 and now we are comparing what we are comparing two quantities okay so now what are the examples of so if you look at here so if we have if structure if structure so we make decision based on truth or falsity of a condition based on the truth or falsity of a condition if the condition is met the body is executed else the body is not else the body is not executed okay so now if this condition is true so which body is executed this body will be executed if it's not true then the body will not be executed okay i will explain this with an example i will explain this with an example so what are different examples what are different examples of conditional operators so the conditional operator are this so we have two type of operators one is the relational operator one is relational, relational operator and another is equality operator there are two type of operator can you see in the table relational operator on the left hand side so there are two type of operators one is a relational operator and another is a equality operator okay okay so how does relational operator if if you see in the table if s is greater than y so it means we are comparing two quantities we are comparing two quantities what is that quantities x and y there are two possibilities either the condition is true or the condition is false okay x can be a variable x can be a variable it can be of type what float it can be of type eight it can be of type double so there are different there are different scenarios so in all kind of uh, equality and relational operator we are comparing two quantities i will explain this with an example now if you say let's assume that the value of x is 5 and the value of y is 9 the value of x is 5 and the value of y is 9 okay now if we say if 
x is greater than y now tell me this condition is true or false false okay so it means so this if we say if i writing now the here say c out if i write c out x is greater than y will this statement be executed or not in this particular scenario so it means now we have two things we are using if what is if what is this if which operator conditional operator so conditional it is a conditional operator please turn off your mic okay so be, because there is distortion so this is a conditional operator okay in conditional operator within this conditional operator we have two quantities x and y so we are comparing what comparing which quantity we are comparing two quantities what is x another is y we are comparing two quantities within this in between this greater this greater symbol if you look at this greater symbol it is in yellow what is this relational operator okay now if you look at this statement so we are comparing two quantities one quantity is x other quantity is y now we are using a conditional statement we are using a conditional statement what is example of conditional statement if so this is a conditional statement it is if so it means this is conditional statement okay after any conditional statement so if we say if this is a what is this if this is a conditional statement and now what is this this is the what is this body of what body of conditional state not body of program if you look at the body of the program the body of the program start with the main function so this is a main start main and then end main but this is the body of what conditional statements okay now if you look at this can you see this what is this this is what body of conditional statement will this statement be executed or not this statement will not be executed why this statement will not be executed because the condition is false okay now if we say if we write the same thing so actually if you look at here okay similarly there are a lot of examples so now can you see in this example okay so now this is a main program can you see here include i stream can you see this i stream using namespace spd std now we are entering into main function we have defined two variables what is the name of that variable num1 and num2 okay now now we have we are taking these inputs from the user we are taking these inputs from the user so we are taking these from the user c in for c in we are taking these values from the and the second num2 now if you look at down now what we are comparing now the if structure compares the values of num1 and num2 to test for equality if you look at this operator what operator is this equality, equality. so the, the equality operator is represented by two equal sign two equal signs so this is two equal signs so this represent a equality operator okay so if these are true if let's assume if number is 5 and number 2 is 5 the condition is true or false the condition is true so this statement will be executed or not this statement will be Executed. Okay, now you look at the second statement. So now we are comparing again number one and number two. Which operator we are using? 
equality of data so there are two type of equality of data one is is equal to and one is is not equal to so okay so if number one is 5 and number two is 9 are they equal or not equal so this condition will be true or false the second condition will be true because 5 is not equal to 9 because 5 is not equal to 9 so if the second statement if condition is true values are not equal so it's give this statement so if you look at the third statement so another if you look at the line number 26 if you look at line number 26 if number is smaller than number 2 so if, if we have number is 5 and number 2 is 9 the statement will be true or false true so that statement will be executed or not yes. executed similarly in line number 29 We have number one and number two. Have executed. So there are different scenarios until which we are comparing to different quantities. And now let's see. Now let's see that how it will work. So try on W three schools. I have written a function, small function. Can you see it? main which variable we have we have declared can you see on the screen okay okay now i have first i have to now can you see the screen okay so now if you start with the main function can you see this main function okay now which variable we have defined num1 and num2 okay so we have defined two variables num1 and num2 which value is assigned to num1 65 which value is assigned to num2 32 this this statement is so is this condition is will be true or false false why because num1 is not equal to num2 will this statement will be executed no this statement will be executed yes What about this statement? No, because number one is greater than number two. What about this statement? Yes, will be executed because sixty-five is greater than thirty-two. The condition is true or false? True. Okay. Is number one is smaller than or equal to? So it means it will not only check for smaller or equal. And the second one is number one is greater or equal. Okay. Now if you run this code. If you run this code, so it's sixty-five is not equal to thirty-two. Sixty-five is not equal to thirty-two. So this statement is executed. Agreed? Again, which statement is executed? Sixty-five is greater than thirty-two because this condition is now true. Again. This statement will be executed. Why? Because sixty-five is greater or equal to thirty-two. So you please try this code and you can now. Okay, now. So all these statements, sixty-five is not equal to thirty-two. Agreed or not? If we change the value of num one and num two, if we swap this value, so which statement will be executed? The first one will be executed. Run. If you run. so the first one will not be executed because they are false 32 is not equal to 65 this statement will be executed agreed hmm acha now it's very important now if if i want to execute multiple statements if we want to execute multiple statement let's assume if c out welcome to IST. Let's assume if we write this and and L. Okay. Now it's very important. It's very important to know. Will this statement be executed? Welcome to IST. Yes. Why? It's important because welcome to IST does not have any condition. It does not have any. condition 
so if you want to put this condition into null one is not equal to null two what what we have to do now so we are using conditional operator but i don't i will i will say okay now we say okay now can if we say if we write quantities quantities not equal done will this statement will be executed yes why because on the top quantities not equal will be executed independent of the condition okay but if we say Okay, now if we write, I, I, I'm explaining this. C out is num greater. If I run it, will this statement be executed? C out quantities equal. Are they equal? No. But why it is executed? Because there is no condition mentioned. But if you want to execute, if you want to put these two statements within the same if, what should we do? No. Agreed or not? Why? If you run this statement, so if you want to put a condition and you want to put multiple statement within that condition, what we need to do? So we need to put curly brackets. So I will explain this on a note. So so if we say if there is a condition there is a condition and there is statement one so if this condition is true how many statements will be executed a single statement if you want to execute multiple statements within a condition what we need to do if condition then we put now we now we need to put so statement one statement two until statement and so if you want to execute multiple statements within a condition expression expression so what we need to do we need to put Two curly brackets, one curly bracket in the start and one curly bracket in the end. Agreed or not? Okay. So now we will try to run this code using different values. So if we say 32 and run this code, how many statements will be executed? 32 is equal to 32. This statement is executed and this statement is executed. Why these two statements are executed? Because the condition is true or false? Condition is true. Okay, now 32 is less than. 32 is less than or equal to. This condition is true. Why? Because it is less than or equal to. So 32 is less than or equal to 32. So this statement is also true. Agreed or not? If num1 is greater than num2, this condition is also true. Why? Because we are comparing either it is greater than 32 or equal to 32. So there are different possibilities. So if you are using a conditional expression, there are two possible outcomes of a conditional expression. Either the condition is true or the condition is false. Okay. Now this is one scenario. You have agreed? 
ओके नाउ वी विल राइट नाउ अनदर प्रोग्राम ओके सो नाउ आई विल आई विल कॉपी दिस कोड and i will paste it in double e 21b and you can try this your code okay okay now so now we try another code now we are comparing else okay now we are studying if and else if the condition is true which statement will be executed the first one and the second one this will statement will be executed and this statement if the condition is false so if you run it so it will be printed see out num1 what is the value of num1 32 32 is equal to what is the value of num2 32 and then quantities equal why i set the second set will be executed or not executed okay now if i put it like this in if i put if i put it here if i run it so if you look at this second statement Why? Okay, because you, you it's an error. Run. Why it's an error? Because after an if, you should have an else statement. A else else statement should be preceded with a if. Okay, so now, okay, I I just delete this. uh i now we what we do we just and if you run it so 32 is equal to 32 and quantities are equal this statement is executed okay so now we have to if statement if we have if statement without an else statement so if the condition is met will this statement will be executed yes okay if we say 35 and then we end it here see out program ended success fully and and else okay i run it what will happen program ended successfully the condition is true or false false so it means th will this statement be executed no and why this statement is executed because there is no condition it means this statement is executed unconditionally okay so now we have used an if statement with no else statement okay in in other words if you want to put an else statement now in this case now we have an else statement and if we run this program then 
the first two statement will be executed and the last statement will be executed the last statement will be executed in both scenarios either the condition is true or the condition is false why the last statement is executed because there is no condition on it okay so now we have studied which statement which statement we have studied conditional statement okay so you can try different versions of the programs you can try different version of the programs okay now so there are different type of there are different type of operators there are different type of c++ operations so there are different type of c++ operations what are these operations can you see okay so we will study with arithmetic operators so what are arithmetic operators kon kon se arithmetic operators hain plus minus steric and modulus do you know what is modulus operator modulus operator parenthesis operator steric or not i will explain this with an example i will explain this with an example so first we will study an arithmetic operator if we say c is equal to a plus b and the value of a is 5 and the value of b is 3 what will be the value of c it okay. what operator is this arithmetic operator if it's a minus b what will be the value 2 if it is a multiplied by b 15 a divided by b So now, if we say five divided by three, what will the value of five divided by three? If we say c is equal to five divided by three, what will be the value of c? Depends on what? Depending of what? No, depending on type of c. If c is an integer, if we say, if we say, if we say, int c is equal to five divided by three, what will be the value of c? One. If we say float d is equal to five divided by five point zero divided by three point zero, why we are using three point five divided by three point zero? Because it is floating point. What will be the value? One point six, 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 and so forth, so on. It will be a very big quantity. So okay, what will be the outputs? So, okay, now we try this. We try this. Okay, now I am copying here this code. I am copying this code, and then I am pasting it on the WhatsApp. There is double one B. I'm here. you can try this please try all of these codes at your home okay so now we are trying another code now if we say int num1 and num2 num1 is equal to 7 num2 is equal to C out. Okay. And actually, now if you define int num three is equal to seven divided by five, and C out num three is equal to okay. 
and then num three and then and l. If we execute this program, num three is equal to one. But if we define the float, float num four is equal to seven divided by seven divided seven point zero divided by five point zero and see out num four and num four what will be displayed one point four agreed okay now we will use another operator we call it int int num five is equal to num one in person num two what is the value of num one seven what is the value of num two five and then if you display the value of num five what will be the output What is the output? What is the output? Two. Why? Because it is a remainder operator. I will explain this in an example. So, if you want to provide any addition, if you say c is equal to a divided by b. So if we divide a by b, so what is this a? We have two quantities. One is divisor, and another is dividend. One is divisor, and another is dividend. So actually, if we say so, now if we have seven, and now we are dividing it by five, so it means seven divided by five. So one is divisor, and another is dividend. Five ones are five, and then two. So what is this one? Quotient. And what is this two? Remainder. Agreed. So if you are using seven in percent five. What will be displayed? Two. Why? Because it's a remainder operator. And if we say seven divided by five, what will be displayed? One. Why? Quotient. So this seven divided by five will display the quotient, provided that it will display the quotient if this c is which quantity? Integer quantity, but if it's a floating point quantity, then it will display the whole part, also the integer part and the fractional part. We have to, if we floating point, we have two parts. One is the integer part, and another is the fractional part. I will say or the decimal part. Okay. Agreed or not agreed? Agreed. Okay. So now, if you want to Display some values. Okay, now if you want to uh, implement different formulas, if you want to implement different formulas, if we say b square minus 4ac, do you remember this formula? Okay, how would you write it in C, C++? b multiply by b minus multiply by a multiply by c okay so now let's try this okay so now what i'm doing i'm copying this code and i am now where is this you can try this code at home and you can try different combinations okay now you delete this program and if you say 
P is equal to okay. Now we have to define float P is equal to 5.0. Okay, float A is equal to 3.0. Semicolon, not comma. Semicolon. Okay, float C is equal to 1.0. Colon. So, if you want to compute float result, can I write it like this? Result is equal to B multiplied by B minus 4 multiplied by A multiplied by C, and then we can see out see out result is equal to result, and then and then क्या कह रहे Yes, ready not to be separated. If you run it, देखे which type of error was this? Syntax error. Why? Because we forgot this operator. What is this operator? insertion operator if you remember stream insertion operator if you remember so we missed the stream insertion operator what is the result 13 okay okay if we say 3.2 then if we run it twelve point two if we define it as an integer what will be displayed So you sh okay. What was the rule that we set? If you want to define a quantity, so now what is this? Result is equal to b square minus four ac. This is an expression. So we have a left hand side and a right hand side. What is on the left hand side? Result. What is on the right hand side? Formula. So we have a left hand side and on the right hand side. So if you say that we have a left hand side and a right hand side and what was the rule of thumb? The quantity on the left hand side should be of the same type. It's a good programming practice. What's a good programming practice? It's a good programming practice so that the quantities that is defined on the left hand side should be of the same type on the right hand side. But there can be some exceptions. Let's assume if you want to perform a division of an integer operation. If you want to perform a division of an operation. If the operation on the right hand side. So if we say. If we say int a is equal to 5. Comma b is equal to 8. Int a is equal to 5 or uh, sorry uh, 12. And b is equal to 8. Okay, now both A and B is of the same type. If I want to find the average, so how should we define it? So we should define it as a float or integer? Float. Float, average. How can I calculate average? A plus B divided by 2 and C out. Average and then uh, now I said that it's a good programming practice. Huh? Okay, now it's a conflicting A B has been defined above. So actually. Now you remember here, now it is given an error. A is defined here is an integer. And A is defined here is a float. So compile is what? Compile, compile is now confused. So you should not define a variable to be under different type in the same body. 
in the same body what is this body this is your cucumber within the same body so how we can define it so we can define it e and f e and f if you run this yeah they get there are a lot of so you you, sh you should know what kind of error is this average is equal to 10 why average okay now if we if we say uh five i want to make it is so this average should be should this average should be defined why it has printed eight huh but we have defined float as an average yeah because e and f is not of type what integer so we should do type casting we should do type of what is type casting so we should disconvert this e into float and f into float and if we run it what will be printed 8.5 why this is called as type casting so type casting what we are doing okay now we have defined e as what no no we have defined float as a integer now if you are doing this type casting e we are instructing the compiler to convert this e into what float so actually if you see it so we are instructing the compiler to convert this e into Float. So if we convert this into float, so it is actually not 12. It is actually 12.0. And then we are again instructing the compiler to convert this into what? Float. It will convert it into 5.0. It will be calculated. Okay. So now if we say, so we are defining two two quantities. So we are defining I am for your uh, Think we are defining two things. We say float average one and float average two. So one is without type casting. So can I write it like this? Float without casting and the, the second one float with type casting. And if we say average is equal to average one. Agreed? And average 2 is equal to? Average 2. If you run this program, if you look at the expression, both expression are same or different? Same. But what's the difference? In the first one, we have defined the elements on the right hand side as Integer, when we have defined it as an integer, it will be related as an integer or float? Integer. integer. And in the second case, what we did? We did type casting. When we did type casting, we have converted the element into float. First, we converted it into float. When we convert it into floats, so it will be evaluated as a float integer and then it will be displayed. Agreed or not? Okay. Okay, now if you want to compute, okay, if you want to compute x, y plus z, how would it be write in C plus plus? X multiply by plus z. Okay. So can we do it like this? So now we have defined uh, A, B, C. So if we say double result 2 is equal to A multiply by A multiply by B plus C. What is the type of B and C? No. What is the type of B and C? Float. A is defined as a float. B is defined as a float. C is defined as a float so okay b plus c b and c are added what's the result six six will be multiplied by what with what 
3.2 and then we can display the result result 2 is equal to what result 2 and if you run our code Nineteen point two. Six multiplied by three point two is actually nineteen point two. If we skip this hysteric and run it, error. Why there is an error? Okay, here we now you have missed it. So now if you put it hysteric here, similarly if you look at here, b multiplied by b, we cannot say b square. So four can can if you say b. 4ac and if you run it what type of error syntax error how can I write this error 4 multiply by a multiply by c so it's very important so actually whatever is the mathematical expression generally see if we say but the mathematical expression of result is b square minus 4ac but you can write not write it as like this the mathematical expression so if you look at here if you see so now what is this a mathematical expression but if you want to represent it in c so we we should insert static here so okay if you look at here b square minus 4ac this is a mathematical expression but if you want to express this in cc plus plus how can we write b multiplied by b so we cannot write 4ac if we write 4ac what kind of error syntax error and to represent this how we can represent this in c c plus plus 4 multiply by a multiply by c so a lot of things are there so now if we say it's very important so if we say that we have an expression y is equal to y divided by so we have an expression y divided by x cube y divided by x cube plus x square minus 2x plus 5 so what is this what is this mathematical expression if you want to express this in c or c plus plus how can we write this is equal to what this is equal to what y agree slash then we can have a parenthesis here you must use parenthesis and how we can write better multiply by x multiply by x plus x minus static x plus 5 so what is this parenthesis this is also a kind of operator this is also kind of a operator okay agreed or not okay now if you want to find the average of two elements if you want to find the average okay so now we want to find average of three elements a plus a plus b plus c divided by three and average we have average one and average two a plus b plus c divided by three which one is correct this one is wrong this one is correct why because first a will be added with b and then c otherwise if you want this expression so what will happen first it will be where c divided by 3 and it will be added with a plus b let's say if this is 5 so it will be equal to 5 plus 3 plus c c if the value of c is 9 9 divided by 3 so it will be related to 3 5 plus 3 plus 3 11 and actually it is not and if you say 5 plus 3 plus 9 5 plus 3 
plus 9 divided by 3 how it will be 17 divided by 3 and this value will be equal to 5.66 and so forth so on agreed okay okay so now we have operand we have rules of operand precedence rules of operand precedence so the highest precedence is for parenthesis it will be evaluated first after that what is the operating precedence steric slash its uh, its precedence is second and then for third plus and minus its precedence is third so i will explain this with an example so if you want to evaluate 20 minus 4 divided by 5 multiply by 2 okay okay and in parenthesis if we have multiple parenthesis within parenthesis if you have multiple parenthesis so which will be evaluated first the green one so it means we say the inner is evaluated first then the red red one that is outer and the black one black one is the outer most so the green one is the innermost and the black one is the outermost so so if we have this parenthesis and the parenthesis is nested so the innermost will be evaluated first okay so the first precedence is parenthesis the second one is and it is always calculated from left to right from left to right so it means if, if both are specified it is from left to right and also the third precedence is plus and minus and it was also from left to right so if you have an expression 20 minus 4 multiplied by 5 multiply by 5 okay plus 3 multiply by 5 in person 4 which one has the highest precedence in this case multiply then multiply in person and divide Div yes yes okay now if you look at here if you look at this gray so this one has a second precedence or the first precedence second but which will be related first divide why divide because we are starting from left to right so this divide this steric this steric and this modulus operator all of them have the same precedence is priority is first or second second but if you look at here which one is the highest priority in this case? Divide. Why divide? Because it comes first. So it, it is your left hand side and this is your right hand side. So the priority is evaluated from left to right. So now we will see. Okay. Now divide is the highest priority or plus is the highest priority? Device has the highest priority. But if you have a divide and multiply, both has the same priority. Both has the same priority. But if divide is before multiply, which one is the highest priority? Divide. If multiply is before divide, multiply has the highest priority. So if we if there are two operators that is the same priority. So how we then we can calculate the priority? From left to right. So this one has the highest priority. Priority number one. This one is the priority number two. This one is priority number three. So how can we relate twenty minus four point five? What is the four point five minus point eight? <laughs> Multiply by two plus then 
we will let this how does it will let 1.6 then we can do the expression then in the third case it will be plus 3 multiplied by 5 what is 3 multiplied by 5 15 then in percent what 4 minus 20 and 20 minus 1.6 20 minus 1.6, then it has the highest priority. 15 in person 4. What is the remainder of prayer? 4, 3s are 12. What is the remainder? 3 plus 3. Then we will integrate this. Y minus has the highest priority. Because it comes first and then C. So then it will be evaluated first and then. So this is called as operator precedence. And then you can do this oppressor precedence. Okay, agreed? Oh, stop recording.